you know, I like fishing for all different species of fish through the ice, bluegills, crappies, walleyes, but some of my favorites are actually what you'd consider more exotic ice fishing species, such as whitefish, catfish, and so one of my absolute favorites, trout. And that's what I'm looking at right now. I'm looking at the stocking reports of the lake that I'm going to shortly. And I can see here, they've actually dumped some big ones in there, actually about 140 adults. These are like three to four pound Kamloop trout. And it, this could be sort of a cool mission, but I love rainbow trout fishing through the ice. Now we're just starting to get set up for trout here. You know, one thing that uh, trout actually, these stocked trout actually can wander this entire lake. But what we're gonna do is start out on the bank, pretty close to the bank, it's early in the morning. A lot of times these fish are cruising, but you'll notice I have a real sharp drop off here and it transitions onto a shallow uh, flat in here. So I figure this is a key area. The fish are gonna sort of corral the fish into a little bit of a smaller area. Later in the day, after the sun gets up a little bit higher, we might move out to deeper water, but first thing I gotta do is cut holes. That's the cool thing about trout like this. We're supposed, we're really gonna look for them visually and actually see the fish hit the baits. They, a lot of times when these fish are active, they'll fe be feeding right below the surface. But I think we're ready. Just get the uh, clammy set up here. And in short order, the interesting thing is you're going to see, but the water is so clear, we'll be able to see the bottom really easily, actually. You can probably see the bottom in this particular lake, probably in 25, 30 foot of water. The water is that clear. Oop, there's one right there. There's one deeper. He's a little bit, we'll let it down a little bit. One thing that you want to definitely check on is regulations because the regulations in these uh, designated uh, trout lakes is often different than what the other regulations are. For example, in Minnesota, you can fish with two lines. In designated trout lakes, you can only fish with one line. Also, you also need a trout stamp. You know, the trout stamp is really important in the fact that they're what pay for the stocking programs. Those, those fees that are associated to the trout stamp go directly into the stocking of these lakes. You know, in Minnesota, actually, I don't even know how many different uh, stock lakes are in Minnesota. There's a lot of them. This, hap this you know, the Crosby mine pits happen to be just really close to my house, so I end up fishing them. You know, a, a lot of states, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, even North Dakota and South Dakota actually have uh, have these designated trout lakes, Northwest Ontario, Michigan. And then you actually have the Great Lakes fisheries too. And those are just unbelievable because they, they, then you're talking really monstrous size, size, size trout, trout in excess of, you know, eight to 10 pounds. I've caught fishes, you know, really close to 25 pounds through the ice. Oop, the boy, we got a whole pack of something's moving around. It's just out of, out of sight, I can't see. The one thing about trout generally, you set up in a spot like that they're, because they're so spooky. A lot of times what you do is you set up in an area and they're moving around in this mine pit and they're, they're just sort of swimming. So what you want to do is you're sort of pass shooting, set up in an area and just fish and they, eventually the fish will come through that area. Come here, buddy. Not a biggie. The interesting thing is, is a lot of times the, the biggest fish, these smaller ones are down uh, deeper. So a lot of times the real big ones will be swimming right below the surface. And when you look at where we're positioned here, I got the shack set really close to a, uh, to the uh, shoreline because right over there, that's, you know, 30 feet away, that's the bank. But we're sitting in 65 foot of water. That fish just came on a little tungsten probe, a VMC probe worm. One thing with these, almost all these fish, what's really key is ultra finesse, ultra, ultra finesse. And what I mean by that is really light line. This is four pound test, uh, fluorocarbon suffix, fluorocarbon. Oop, oh, there's one right there. Oh, I just had one up. <laughs> Look at that. I just had one high. Oop, he's back on, he's back on it again. Got him. See, look at that. I caught the last one 65 feet down. This one came in 
three foot below the ice, three or four foot below the ice. Wow, he's gone. Huh. And that one just came on a little VMC uh, tungsten ice fly, just to, as you can see how, how big that bait, bait is. It's just really almost microscopic. So I put a split shot, but I put the split shot way above the, uh, the bait. And then I just got a little waxy on there. And a lot of times what you want that thing to do is hang uh, really ver uh, horizontal in the water column. You don't want it twisted uh, hanging uh, vertical. That's one thing nice about this jig. As you can see, it just hangs very, very vertical. And then I have a, just a little red colored spike for taste on it. But I know one thing, they have tremendous vision. And a lot of times you may even have to uh, fish with relatively small lures. They, you know, they're eating a lot of different types of forage. They're eating bugs, insects, uh, freshwater shrimp, you know, a lot of small stuff, even, even zooplankton. So a lot of times for trout, even for big trout, you can use really small lures. Ooh, that's a little bit better one there. <laughs> yeah. Yo, whoa. Whoa, <laughs> these guys, they're pretty wild, <laughs> just snaking around. Look at that. Yeah, I saw that one come, actually hit my, ba hit my bait. Come here, buddy. Come here. No biggies yet. There are some big ones in here. The interesting thing is, you know, when they stock them, this is like a classic stocker right here, about this size. But they actually, uh, in some of these lakes, they intermittently put in a pretty substantial fish, like a, almost adults. And they'll, you know, vary in, in size. But it, when they stock them, some of them, you know, maybe three to four pounds, actually. In some of these lakes, uh, like brown trout will actually grow pretty good size too. That's just a little pip squeak. We'll let her go back down to the depths. And it seems like they're also really, really spooky. That's one thing that to me, I think you're almost better off to set up in a spot and you sort of wait for them to come to you versus you going and moving and moving really quickly on top of them because I think these fish, there's nothing around them. There's no cover or anything like that. So the fish are pretty spooky and they have a tendency to blow away from you for a little bit anyway. And so if you sit up in a spot and you just sort of pass shoot and once you get them sort of, you know, along a, like a ledge drop or like a distinct point in the, where the fish are sort of corralling and they keep on circling through, you get in a good spot where the fish are just moving through that area and they just intermittently are, these fish are just like constantly just circling this, uh, this mine pit. This mine pit here is probably only, a, you know, maybe a couple of hundred acres in size. I know one thing, if you like ice fishing and haven't taken advantage of the North Country's fantastic stock trout fisheries, you should. Look at that little rascal right there. That guy there weighed very close to 20 pounds or slightly bigger than that. But it just goes to show you some of the quality of the fisheries that we have in the North Country through the ice.